When we analyze World War II, there is always one factor that stands out above all others. The fuel. Although countries such as the United States or the Soviet Union were able to count on large oil reserves throughout the conflict, the side led by Germany had many difficulties in having good fuel production. This lack continued to worsen as the years went by, until during the last months of the war it became unbearable, and conditioned all of Germany's actions and strategies. Next, in this program, we will analyze the level of fuel production of each country during this conflict, and where they obtained the long-awaited oil. Finally, we will see what the situation was like in Germany during the final months of the war with hardly any gasoline. The first thing we are going to analyze is where each country obtained its fuel from before the Second World War began. Starting with Germany, we have to indicate that it had three sources of oil. Firstly, he had what he was capable of producing on his own, which as we will now see, was a minuscule amount. Secondly, it was nourished by the oil that it could buy from other European countries such as Hungary and Romania. And finally, this being one of its largest sources of fuel, Germany also had oil that it could buy from the Soviet Union and the United States. On the contrary, the United States had strong oil production, to which must be added what was also produced in the rest of the American continent. Great Britain maintained its hegemony over Middle Eastern oil with exploitations also in Canada, South America, Africa, and Europe. For its part, Japan, which would also suffer from a lack of fuel as much or more than Germany, obtained 80% of its fuel through its trade with the United States and 20% from the oil fields of the Dutch Indies in Southeast Asia. And finally, Italy obtained fuel in a very similar way to that of Germany, the most important being that it acquired from Romanian refineries. As you can see on the screen, this table shows the exact figure for the production of barrels per day for each country before the conflict began. The first position goes to the United States with more than 1 million barrels a day, to which we can add the more than 250,000 that were produced in the rest of America. With respect to the Soviet Union, we can say that its production was quite high, reaching 182,000 barrels per day. Although it is approximately 20% of what the United States had, it was more than enough to not suffer any shortage. The British, for their part, due to their occupied territories in the Middle East, and in the rest of their empire, also had a supply of approximately 120,000 barrels per day. Regarding the Axis countries, the Third Reich had a production of 3,500 barrels per day in 1939, and Romania, which was going to begin supplying mainly to Germany and Italy, had a production of 41,000 barrels per day. Finally, Japan, which we have mentioned obtained 80% of its oil directly from the United States, had only a national production of only 1,700 barrels per day. As we can see, the Axis powers produced approximately 50,000 barrels a day before the start of the conflict, compared to the more than 1,600,000 produced by their future enemies. In summary, the production available to the Axis countries was 3% of the production their enemies had. Before the conflict began, the Germans knew that they would need much more fuel to carry out a modern war. In this way, they began to work on new forms of oil refining, and managed to triple their production, reaching about 9,000 barrels per day. It is estimated that before going to war with Stalin, the Soviet Union had supplied Germany with 4,500,000 barrels over the last two years. This figure is slightly higher than the maximum national production that Germany achieved during its best year before 1941. But without a doubt, Germany's greatest achievement came with the manufacture of synthetic fuels from coal and lignite, which would arrive in 1941 at an unprecedented rate of 31 million barrels per year, which represented approximately 85,000 barrels per day. This production would reach its maximum in 1943, before being reduced by the bombing suffered by these synthetic fuel production plants. To give you an idea, at the end of 1943, Germany was producing approximately 62 million barrels per year. This figure may seem spectacular until we compare it with the production of the United States, which in 1943, already in the middle of the World War, reached a production of up to 4 million barrels per day. However, when talking about fuel, there is another factor that is very important, this being fuel quality. 
while the world leader in oil production, being the United States, could afford to manufacture 100 octane gasoline, the Germans had to settle for 87 octane gasoline. In summary, it should be noted that producing gasoline with a higher fuel consumption requires more oil, and that is why the Germans were forced to reduce its quality. This undoubtedly had an impact on lower performance in its engines, which could not exploit the good quality of combat or aviation tanks. Well, once we have seen the amount of fuel that each country had access to, let's now see how much their armies consumed. A German armored division needed 30 barrels to advance one mile, or in other words, 1,600 meters. Taking into account that each barrel of Brent represents about 160 liters, a German armored division needed about 4,800 liters of gasoline to advance 1,600 meters. If we go, for example, to Operation Barbarossa, where 20 German armored divisions participated and traveled practically 1,000 kilometers each, we can calculate that consumption is estimated at approximately 450,000 barrels only for these 20 armored divisions. To this figure we must add the fuel spent by the rest of the divisions, whether motorized or infantry, and that spent by the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine, and by the entire German truck logistics system. As you all know, the war propaganda of the time made it believed that the German army was moved 100% by motorized and armored divisions. However, the reality was that up to 70% of German transportation depended on horses, and there were a total of 5,300 horses assigned to each infantry division, which were practically 100% responsible for the transportation and supply of German material. In this other graph that we are seeing on the screen, we can see how the Germans were able to accumulate fuel reserves during the winter months, and how during the spring and summer months these reserves were almost completely consumed. Although year after year they were able to recover, the summer of 1944 marked the turning point after which everything went downhill. This was due to what happened between the months of May and September, in which Allied bombing reduced German fuel production by 85%. To give us an idea of the brutality of these bombings, in a single attack on May 12, more than 900 bombers were used to destroy these plants, in which about half were damaged. The damage of that air raid was so great that it led the Minister of Armaments himself, Albert Speer, to say that the technological war was lost that day. Although many of the synthetic fuel plants were able to recover minimally by the end of 1944, fuel production plummeted. Furthermore, and if that were not enough, Romania also fell into the hands of the Soviet Union in August 1944, and the Germans stopped receiving the vital fuel that arrived from the Romanian oil wells. All these events were tremendously paradoxical because of the following. It was precisely in 1944 when Germany reached its maximum industrial production, but it did not have enough fuel to operate it at full capacity, or even at half capacity. In addition, negative vicious circles occurred, such as the one we will explain below. After having to reduce aviation gasoline by 95%, the Luftwaffe also had to reduce the protection it could give to its fuel production facilities, which made them more easily bombed, and therefore, continue to produce less fuel. The endemic lack of fuel on the part of the Luftwaffe even meant that planes were towed by donkeys and horses at airfields. At the end of the war during the months of 1945, German army trucks had to be towed with oxen or horses, having to save the scarce fuel available for when combat arrived. Another of the most striking examples was that during the Battle of Berlin, many of the armored vehicles that Germany still had around its capital could not be sent to defend the city due to lack of fuel. Furthermore, and as we have analyzed in other programs, the defensive works, were not entirely effective because there was no gasoline for the construction vehicles to operate. Before ending the program, let's quote a few phrases from two of the most important characters in the conflict. After Germany's surrender, Stalin said that, the war was decided by engines and octane. For his part, Churchill said that, above all, gasoline had controlled every movement. Well, what do you think of the abysmal difference between the fuel available on each side? Did you know that today 900% more fuel is produced in relation to the amount of fuel that was produced during World War II? Do you consider that fuel was Germany's main Achilles heel? 
I leave you in the description the program that we uploaded about Guderian, in which according to his opinion, he gave the Americans the keys to the defeat of the Third Reich.